kind of fight they like. You've got to remember, gents, that this, this enemy does not like to show his face. And a lot of the, the Marines that I've had wounded and killed over the past five months have been by a faceless enemy. And again, like I said, the enemy has got a face. He's called Satan, and he's in Palooza. And we're going to destroy him. For loving us. In Jesus Christ's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Your heart belongs to Jesus. <laughs> The waiting is finally over. The guerrillas' traditional advantage, cover of darkness, is nullified by the Marines' night vision. These exchanges answer one question. The insurgents won't run. The Marines will have to fight every step of the way into Fallujah. Alpha Company are heading for the center of the city. So far, no serious opposition. The Marines wait for a tank to blow a hole in the wall of the police compound, and then they're in. They don't want to go in using the obvious entrances, as these could be booby-trapped. They have to quickly strengthen this position before the city wakes. They've been inserted right in the middle of the insurgents. So after the sun rises, the Marines find themselves under attack from all sides. There's a sniper in this minaret just a hundred meters away. The threat from those mosques directly ahead. We're taking fire from the mosque. The ones we can see, yeah? The big one, I think. The one on the right, that's where we're taking fire from. Colonel Brandl arrives. His almost deliberate insouciance steadies everyone's nerves. He decides to call in an airstrike. Can we get air on that? We got six platoon engaged. First platoon apparently has no eyes on it. On Brandl's order, tanks move in. The Marines say they have to hit back when the holy sites are used by snipers. Fallujah is known as the city of mosques. There are more than 130 here. Many were being used by the insurgents. But these images will cause outrage across the Arab world. The Marines break out to the next building. It's got the tallest rooftop, but not taller than two minarets with snipers. A glimpse of Fallujah's terrified civilians. The military interpreter calls out to them to run. The last man through this doorway was shot dead. Some have accused the Marines of deliberately killing civilians, but here they tried to save them some risk themselves. The Marines are now taking heavy, sustained sniper and automatic to this building. It began when Marines on the roof saw a group of Iraqis trying to surrender. As soon as they stood up after seeing the white flag, that's when the firing began. In other words, the Marines say it was a trick by the insurgents. I got numerous individuals on the road. You want me to take those out? Take them out.
Ten seconds. Roger. Impact. Oh, dude. The front lines now between this tower block and the next. In the face of the onslaught, the rebels stayed in this building. They were literally suicidally brave. This is what the coalition's up against. The battle a few hours old. The Americans said they'd already killed hundreds of insurgents. It wasn't hard to believe. We've got the enemy right where we want him. He's coming to us, and we're killing him. I understand you've had some Marines wounded. Yes, we have. Rogers, uh, what happened? The enemy was shooting and uh, they were in the way. Roger, LED. Day two, Alpha Company push out to find and kill the main body of the guerrillas. We follow in an armored vehicle. They cross the main road into the south of Fallujah. The insurgents are here, but where? For a conventional army, this is the worst kind of fighting. They go down a narrow road. A small arms fire from one side, rocket propelled grenades from the other. The Marines don't fire until they see a gunman. That was incoming! Incoming! Nobody's moving to the right. We're taking fire from over there, but we don't see anybody yet. We don't have any positive ID. So we don't we're not gonna open fire. Then they let loose with everything they've got. Hey, up, Outside, two men have been hit by a grenade. One had a severed artery in his leg. I'm fine, man. God damn. He almost died, but in the end, both survived. Go. Go. <laughs> 51 Americans have been killed and 500 injured in this battle. Almost a quarter from the 1-8. It's the coalition's most bloody engagement in Iraq. We return to find the base under attack. The Marines have taken to calling it Fort Apache. The insurgents keep coming back. I'm trying to get to the BBC office in that building. Is there a safe way over? Where, where's the sniper fire coming in? The lesson for these Marines, taking a city isn't enough. You have to occupy every square inch. So next morning, Charlie Company goes sniper hunting. They rush the mosque, which has been the source of the most accurate fire. This takes a whole company, 150 Marines, to deal with one sniper. That's why 160,000 coalition troops are tied down in Iraq. When they get inside, it's empty. The owner of this Kalashnikov is long gone. Then outside, the Marines come under sniper fire from next door. The insurgents have simply moved. As soon as 1st Platoon has the mosque, what? we're going to attack to see the building we took fire from. Here you go, sir. Here you go. Here you go. Go, go, go. The Marines go in, but once again, the insurgents have gone. The Marines attack, the insurgents slip away. This will be the pattern in Fallujah. 
probably in the rest of Iraq too. All they find here are the empty homes of Fallujah's unfortunate civilians. It's clear most of the city has fled. <laughs> As we say, and as we've been doing over the course of the past couple of days, bringing you brand new video as we get it in here to our newsroom of what's going on right now in Fallujah in Iraq. Fox News military analyst, retired Major General Robert Scales is with us. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, General, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now. It seems to me, um, you know, never having been in an experience like that, that they've pretty much taken over a house and are calling the shots from that house. Yeah, what you're seeing is uh, a, a page right out of the urban warfare uh, uh, textbook, uh, Bridget. What you see is a small group of Marines, probably about a squad or smaller, that's taken over a strong point, and they're receiving fire from the uh, from the bad guys uh, around them. And what they're trying to do is number one, make sure that they're not uh, assaulted. And number two, to bring in supporting fires, which probably would be. Uh, a Cobra attack helicopter, an AC-130 gunship, some type of firepower to give them the advantage. Remember, in urban warfare, the, the key is not to fight fair. You don't want to go at these guys rifle on rifle. Uh, what you want to do is bring in uh, American supporting fires and take these guys out in large numbers. And that, that appears to be what these guys are doing. Hunkering down, keeping an alert watch, calling in fires. Uh, that's how you kill the enemy and avoid being killed yourself. And looking at these pictures, General, it looks like the house is um, very much lived in. How do the Marines get in in the first place? They uh, gently ask the, the civilians to leave, or how, how, does, that, how does that go well, down? Well, uh, that's a great question, Bridget. Uh, hopefully what's happening, and I presume presume what's happening is as, as you close in on the perimeter, as the Marines close in on the center, center, center of the city, the civilians are evacuated. That's how you do urban warfare. The last thing you want to do is bring in heavy firepower and kill the innocents. And so clearly what's happened is the family that occupied this town has pulled out long ago, created a, an empty, uh, left an empty building. The Marines have occupied it. As you can see right now, that squad is anxiously trying to, trying to uh, call in some additional firepower so that they can so they can turn the odds in their favor. This is a very, very typical urban warfare firefight. But it's important to realize what these guys are doing is they're not trying to fight street by street, house by house. They're trying to occupy strong points. Right. And obviously it's not something that uh, the U.S. military is gonna, going to come out and announce, hey, this is, this is, going, right. this is going to happen. But we have seen sort of, a, I guess, a, a, a slow acceleration, if you will, um, in in the fighting some people yep. have said that when when the, the big battle again i don't want to overuse the term but if it comes when it comes that that could be the battle that we had been anticipating a year ago in Baghdad. Do you think there's any truth to that, General? No, I don't think so. Look, in, in this type of urban warfare where you have the city surrounded and you're controlling the city, time is on the side of the Marines. Remember, the investing power following military doctrine, the investing power always has the advantage and over time will gain, will continue to, to gain the advantage. The more the Marines can hold on, wear down the enemy, absorb these, uh, these uh, fairly harmless tactical strikes that you see uh, going on here, uh, the more advantage they're going to have if, when they have to, they go into the city to start taking down these centers of resistance. Mm -hmm. now, Patience I, is a virtue in urban warfare. Sure, but I, you know, again, if, if you're the young Marine, that's got to be tough sitting there and, and being patient. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit about how 